What's going on, everyone? This is Eric with Full Man MMA, and today I am joined by UFC bantamweight Jack Shore. Jack, how are you? Very good, my man. Thank you for having me on. Of course. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, so we have a pretty big fight coming up, uh, March 19th, UFC London. Uh, Tamura Valiev, uh, how excited are you to compete in front of a live crowd that's pretty rare nowadays? Uh, yeah, very excited. Um, obviously, since since joining the UFC, uh, three of my four fights has been behind closed doors or, you know, the last one had a, had a very restricted audience in the Apex. So, you know, it'd be really good to get out, out, out in front of some fans, but also some British fans as well. You know, they, they always bring the atmosphere. Um, every fight I've ever had in the UK has been an insane atmosphere. I've took an insane following, a lot of Welsh guys and girls going up there. So I'm really looking forward to it and, uh, and being able to thrive off the environment and, and the noise of the crowds, you know, once again. I don't know if you saw, there was a, a lot of wind in London uh, past few days. The O2 <laughs> Arena took some damage. Is that a worry at all, or are they going to fix that by the fight? Um, so I've I, I seen a lot of that. You know, I, I had probably 50, 50 messages, I think, people who had tickets who were like flapping and, and, and thinking, oh, shit, is the show going to be cancelled? Um, but basically, the, the the bit of the roofing that got broke, it's, it's almost like a canopy. It used to be like the Millennium Dome or something, and it's obviously every sort of arena and, and, and restaurant and stuff like that inside underneath has actually got his own roof. I see um, Eddie Earns doing a match room show there uh, at the O2 on Sunday. So I'm assuming it must all be good to go if, if there's going to be a boxing show. So fingers crossed. Anyway, we don't get uh, no, no last minute venue changes, but I'm sure they're, they're on the case, hopefully. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, you know, this fight with uh, Valiev initially was supposed to be Umar Nurmagomedov. Um, he pulled out. Now he's actually fighting a week before you. Uh, were you disappointed when another Nurmagomedov fight fell through for you? Um, I mean, I don't disappoint is the word. I, I was obviously looking forward to the to the challenge and, and the fact that, you know, Khabib and, and the team are going to be in the corner. And it would have been nice to, to get up against one of those guys. It would have been one for the bucket list. Um, but I've had that many pullouts now. It doesn't, when I get told the fights change, it doesn't come as a surprise to me anymore. I'm used to it. I've had I think I've had something like 10 or 11 names off of me in, in five fights in the UFC. So I, I didn't let it get to me. Obviously, we were well away from the fight. You know, we were like 10 weeks out. So it, it wasn't um, it wasn't like a major drama then, you know, where the opponent changed a week or two before and you start to question, are they going to get someone in? And who is it going to be? Am I going to be able to, to adapt my game plan? Um, but, you know, I'm sure we'll get to do that one down the line. Uh, Umar's obviously undefeated. He, he's got a tough fight in front of him in in Cal Hur anyway. So if he gets through him, I'm sure he'll, he'll knock him up a couple of a couple of spots um, in terms of rankings and stuff. So no doubt um, we'll get that one on down the line, whether it be for, for a title or for, for, for a top five spot, but uh, we'll definitely get on at some point. Do you know why he pulled out of the fight? I'm not sure. Um, originally, I got told by my manager that um, they couldn't get him into London. Um, but then obviously I'm seeing stuff online. Um, I, I see Khabib and... And Omar himself had said something along the lines that the UFC pulled him out. They wasn't sure why, and they wanted him to fight in in Vegas. So I mean, I don't know. From from why I was told they couldn't get to London, but who knows? I mean, perhaps they, they didn't want two prospects going at it so early on in 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 our career. But you know, we were obviously both game for it. Both signed about agreement. So I'm not sure what the the actual reasoning for it was. But you know, ultimately that's in the past now. Unless we get matched again, I'm just going to focus on um, on the guy in front of me. Of course, and uh, you do have a, another tough opponent in front of you in uh, Valiev. Do you have any expectations for this fight? How much do you know about him as a fighter? Yeah, I remember watching uh, Valiev fight fight uh, Barcelos a couple of months back, and um, I remember thinking he, he, he's definitely, uh, you know, you just get a feeling when you watch some of these guys in the division, you think he's definitely someone I'm going to end up running into at some point. Um, he actually called me out after my last fight. Uh, in a in a respectful way, in all fairness, there was no sort of bad blood or anything. He just tweeted after my fight. Obviously, I I, I mentioned I was injured, and he just sort of tweeted, "When when your injury heals, I'm um, sure me it would be a great fight for the fans." And you know the the stars of a line, as they say, and here we go. But yeah, he's a great fighter. You know, he comes from a good camp, and he trains out with uh, Mark Henry and all those guys. Um, and he's a very good striker. You know, he's not a stereotypical Russian who's gonna come and look to try try and take you down the molo. You know, he's a good striker. So. It's a fight I'm looking forward to. I think our styles will clash very well. And, um, you know, it could very well be fight the night. Although, although I'm looking to go out there and make it dominant and make it look easy. If uh, if it's got to become a dog fight and, and we've got to grind it out or bang it out for the, for the fans, then that's all we'll have to do. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I don't want to look past your opponent at all, but it is fun to think about with a win here. You'd be 5-0 in the UFC, 16-0 overall. 
uh, set up for a big fight next? No, maybe like a ranked opponent or something in the near future. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I don't, I don't see how a how a win here doesn't get me a shot at uh, at someone in the rankings. Um, I was offered a fight back in January against a guy who was ranked, but obviously in injury after the last fight meant that I'd done next to no training. I was still re- rehabbing my shoulder. Um, so I I think a win. I think me and Tim are very similar positions. You know, there's a lot of hype around him. There's a lot of hype around me, and um, everyone wants to see us get tested to see. You know, just get a little glimpse of how we would handle these top guys. And I think this is the fight to do it. Whoever comes out on top here, um, I, I don't see how, how we don't get a shot at um, at someone. I, I think like a dominant win and, and a finish. And if, if I do it in style, it may even put me in the rankings anyway, because I know they're very high high on Tamu out in, out in the States. You know, you've got people like Frankie Edgar and Marley Mariah, some people like that who, who, are, who are bigging him up. So if I can go in there and, and take him out, then... You know, all the hype's going to come my way. So, you know, I'm, that's what I'm looking to do. I'm, I'm not looking past him by any means, but obviously I win you. I, I know where it puts me and I know what it means in the in the grander scheme of things. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, you kind of touched on it there, but what are your thoughts on just generally the UFC Bantamweight division as a whole right now? I think myself and a lot of other people say it's the most entertaining uh, in, division in the UFC at the moment. Do you agree? Oh, a million percent. I mean, I, I, I've said it time and time before, but there's like even... You know, you go to the top 15, which is full of sharks, but there's probably 10, 15 guys outside of the top 15, you know, myself included, that you could look at and say, you know, if, they, if this guy was around four years ago, he'd probably be ranked in the top 15, if not the top 10. It's just the division is so stacked from top to bottom, from the ranked guys to the unranked guys, that it, it's a real it's a real shark invest of water. You know, it's, it's a great time to be a part of it. A, every fight is, is a tough fight. It's, it's, it's a fun fight stylistically. There's no real boring fighters in the division everyone comes and brings it so it's a perfect time to be a part of it and I know in years to come when I look back on my career I'll be able to say that not not only was I competing with one of the best and uh, with the best guys in the world and the best organization in the world but I was also doing it in probably the most stacked division at the time so that means a lot to me you know so I, I, I'm just privileged to be a part of it and, and, and look forward to, to showing that I can compete with these top level guys. Yeah, the, uh, the title picture was a little messy in the past year, of course. Um, but with that fight getting uh, booked again, Sterling versus Jan too, uh, I was wondering, as somebody obviously looking towards the top of the division, if you had any thoughts on that rematch there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the fight. I, I think it'll, I do think Jan gets it done, but I think it'll be a lot closer than, than the last fight. I think, obviously, Sterling knows this time. Um, he can't come and just expend all his energy in the first round in, in the hope that he can get Jan down and get him out there. You know, he's very durable, Jan, very tough. Great cardio, comes on a lot lot stronger in the later rounds. You know, he, he almost feels his opponent out the first two and then comes on strong late on. So I think he's going to be a little bit more measured in his approach, Aljo. But um, I, I do think Jan is good enough to fend off a takedown and, and, and ultimately sort of have his way with, with Aljo on the feet. But, you know, I, I do I do expect Aljo to put up a much better, much closer fight this time. And, if he was injured, like you're saying, he is compromised coming into the last one. Who knows if I'll play a factor as well? No, that's true. That's a good point. Um, switching gears a little bit, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your amateur career. Amateur MMA is something close to my heart. Um, so uh, you obviously went 11-0, and won gold at uh, the IMAF European Open in 2015. So uh, I wanted to ask how important your amateur career was for your own development as a pro fighter. Well, well, not a brag, but it was twelve or no. So uh, I gotta get, oh, I gotta well, get that one out there. <laughs> no, mate, listen. Um, the amateur scene and and getting that amateur experience behind you is is so vital, in my opinion, for for anyone who's got aspirations of 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 getting to the top level in this sport. Um, you know, I I as an amateur had experienced more things than than most guys at the time were five, six, and no pro had experienced. You know, I fought multiple times across two, three days. Um. You know, fought for fought for titles, fought undefeated guys, fought wrestlers, fought strikers, and 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 the amateur scene is just growing and growing, especially with the IMAFs and and the tournaments. You know, they 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 are they're banging out like what five six tournaments a year between the Europeans and the Asian Opens and the and the World World Championships. So it's massive for for the development, and and it gives young fighters a good chance to sort of develop their skills before going in the deep. It, it reminds me now it's, it's getting a lot more like the boxing scene. You know, back in the day. You'd have four amateur fights and you'd be ready to turn pro. Whereas you look at the boxing scene, especially in Wales, anyway, I, I don't know what it's like in America, but in in Wales in the UK, there's amateur boxers with two two three hundred amateur fights and then they go pro. So I'm not saying that that we're in a position at the minute where there's amateurs having that many fights, but I know guys who are having 20, 30, 40 amateur fights and then turning over pro. And 
you know, they're, they're, they're pro debutants, but but they're incredible. Their level is world class already. So it's it's a must, in my opinion, for anyone who's got aspirations of, of being at the top of the sport. It did so much for me um, in, in all those years ago, you know, and it's come a long way again since then. Like all, all my teammates, all the youngsters coming through, all the guys who are amateur and want to go pro very soon, I, I try and advise them to stay amateur as long as they can and, and do these IMAF tournaments and experience all these things before you go pro because you know when you go pro ultimately you're aiming for the UFC or, or Bellator or, or the big leagues and, and that is the ultimate goal but there's so much you can achieve as an amateur that are gonna give you that little like look at um Mohamed Makayev you know sure. I think he, he's uh he was 20 something and all as an amateur I mean like we're in five fights now he's in the UFC you know um Going back to myself, I, I was 12 and 0. Um, I, I, I had one pro fight and I signed with Cage Warriors. Now, that's a little bit more common these days. Cage Warriors sort of build guys up from, you know, novice pros. But back when I signed for them, you know, you had to be, I was the only guy with that sort of record on the card. Everyone else around me had, had 10, 15, 20 pro fights. So it does so much show and it can give you that push. Very similar again to the boxing scene. If you win that Commonwealth medal, that Olympic medal, that world medal as an amateur, Straight away, you're looking at these big promotional deals when, when you go on pro. And I, and I think MMA is starting to go the same route. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of amateur MMA and, and, and a big fan of guys getting as much amateur experience as they can before obviously turning over and, and, and attacking the pro ranks. Of course. Well said. And uh, Mohamed Bakayev actually fighting at UFC London uh, alongside you. Uh, he, of course, as you mentioned, had a dedicated, uh, decorated amateur career as well, went through IMAF. Uh, I, I was wondering, do you do you know him at all? Uh, like, are you guys gonna you know get together and talk during uh, fight week? We we chatted online a couple. I never met him in um, in, in person, but um, I, I remember watching him as a, as a youngster when he was like seventeen and thinking, you know, this he had the Khabib, um, the heart and everything, and, and I was just seeing you from Dagestan. But I know he's a he he represents the UK, so um, I remember watching him from a youngster. Watched him in the IMAF and. Yeah, be you know, hopefully fight with I will get to meet him in person and uh and and you know finally we've chatted back and forth, you know, and I wouldn't say we you know we don't chat in depth, but he wishes me well, I wish him well, and, and there's always a good luck and he will see the respects there. And and you know, he's obviously a very skilled young kid, and I'm sure he's got high hopes himself in the UFC. So yeah, you know, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll meet fight week, whether whether it be in the sauna doing the weight cut or or, or actually at the event, but I'm sure we'll uh, we'll cross paths. Uh, it's good to hear. Uh, Jack, you've been so generous with your time today. I wanted to give you the floor real quick. Uh, any teammates, sponsors, uh, social media, anything you wanted to shout out, the floor is yours. Yeah, just as always, obviously, thank you to my, my coaches and my team at, uh, at Show MMA, all my training partners, uh, my sponsors. There's too many for me to name. I don't want to forget anyone, but they're all over my social media, guys. So please, uh, please go and check them out. And, and if they can do anything for you, please feel free to use them. Um, and yeah, my, my social media, I think of Jack Show MMA on pretty much everything. Um, Jack Tank Show on YouTube. I've just started uh, back, go back into the, the YouTube scene and trying to, to get some uh, some vlogs out uh, in the build up to the fight. And then obviously I'll try and do it fight week as well. So chuck me a subscribe on there. Uh, it helps, you know, the support we get online on our social media. It helps us sort of push forward in, in, in strides in, in terms of fighting as well. So as always, and, and just thank you to all my supporters for the for their support. Awesome. Well, uh, we'll link all that in the description below. Jack, uh, best of luck on March 19th. Uh, can't wait to watch. It was great talking to you today. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching this video. If you like our content, be sure to subscribe to Full Man MMA. And while you're at it, make sure to hit the bell icon as well so you never miss an update from us.